So in the 1950s, uh, Alcan put a tunnel through the mountain for a power station. The power station was to supply power to northern British Columbia and also to a smelter that was built in the local town of Kitimat. That's over 70 years ago now, and the tunnel will need a backup tunnel to be put in place. So if you go back in history, the first blast for the T2 adit was done in September 1989. So it's been over 30 years in the making for this tunnel. As we're breaking through in the intake, which was built in the 1950s, it's, it's all coming to a peak. And uh, as you can imagine, the tensions are running high. Uh, this, is, this is like nothing I've ever been involved in before. Um, my history is mining, uh, underground mining, a bit of surface mining and, and, and the like. Uh, this is a tunnel project. That tunnel boring machine technically has done eight and a half kilometres of the upstream tunnel in the last few years. Really the fascination for me is, is that continuous mining cycle. It's not a traditional drill and blast cycle. This is the best of technology being thrown at, uh, at, the, at the mountain here. Keeping the TBM, keeping the beast running is kind of what we call it. Uh, Kamano being uh, isolated here on the west coast of British Columbia. There's no roads there. Mother Nature, there's a huge avalanche paths between here and there. So we've got to make sure that we have three or four or five days uh, product available for the TBM crew. And it not only includes segments to get up, but we've got to bring up additives, concrete, food to the camp. Uh, so it's a continual convoy of equipment moving up and down that road uh, 24 hours a day. And then once we want to support the breakthrough, uh, we've got to get down and pump out the intake. It's flooded at this present time, and we'll be start pumping out over the next couple of weeks and start installing all kinds of equipment to make sure that it's a safe breakthrough. And we have to barge everything from what we call a Sweeney Landing, which is 120, 25 kilometers on a forest service road. Yeah, so we're at the intake um, Tata Lake, and this tunnel is being excavated upstream, so from the downstream to the upstream direction. On this side, which is getting all the excitement today, of course, is the TBM being lined as it gets closer and closer and closer. And uh, it's going to break through here. Um, but this is a moment that a lot of the people on the project have been working towards for four or five, maybe more years. So uh, it'll finally connect that end with this end. next stage of the, of the uh, project, we start to um, basically start removing and disassembling the TBM and it's got to come back out the same entrance it went in. Um, that's a major, uh, major program of work there. The, so the TBM's you know, upwards of six and a half metres in diameter. The TBM itself is, is uh, 1,200 tonnes of steel. It's 195 metres long uh, and um, every bit of it's got to come back out the same way it went in. So, all that is through the dead of winter and water up is planned for uh, mid next year. That's when we'll know we're done. Um, basically the tunnel's clean, the plugs are built, all of the equipment's out and we start that program of watering up the tunnel. First Nations played a crucial part in making this project possible and reaching this milestone. From the consultation process to the naming and designing of the logo on the TBM, and the key role Cheslada Carrier Nation and the other First Nations play on site. It's really been an inspiring team effort. I've worked on a number of projects over the years, but this one has been very special. From the location, the wildlife, the weather, but most importantly, because of the people. The people have pulled this project together. Spreadsheets don't deliver projects. Schedules don't deliver projects. It's the people working together that successfully deliver projects. Thank you.